Hello everyone, this is Tarusunya, BFA final year student of LNIP NERC Guwahati. My main practice is football. I belong from Jiro Valley, small town of Arunachal Pradesh. I know you guys are fighting hard against Corona by staying at home. As an athlete, I'd like to remind you to take care of your health. I'm very passionate about football and I'd like to do my part by introducing you to some simple workout based on football fitness reason that you can do at home. Workout number one are exercises for warm-up in order to prepare an athlete for any competition. The warm-up should gently prepare the body for exercises by gradually increasing the heart rate and circulation. This will loosen the joints and increasing blood flow to the muscles. Warming up is preparing the body for some type of physical activity. It is essential for peak performance and decreases the risk of injury. Second exercise is forward backward stance. Let us face it, you won't always be in position of the ball. Backward stance help prepare you for abrupt shifts in direction, training your body to move quickly in any direction. Backward sprints in particular help develop muscle memory for when you can't take your eyes off on oncoming striker. Step 1. Set out cones 2 to 3 meters apart. Step 2. Sprint forward from the first cone towards the second. Step 3. Upon reaching the second cone, come to a stop and run backwards to the first cone as quickly as you can. ensures your footwork is not only quick but accurate too. The hurdles force you to lift your legs higher than you normally would, preparing you to do those sliding tackles without losing momentum. Step 1. Place many hurdles on the floor at small intervals. Lift up your left leg and quickly step outside of the left hurdle, bringing your right foot over to join it. Step 3. Move your right foot back over to the middle with your left foot falling, then repeat on the right hurdle. Repeat this exercise, ensuring you are keeping up the high pace. Fourth exercise, you are going to want to do what we call mountain climbers. This is going to be very very good in terms of developing your core strength and helping you with jumping and pushing off of the opener and defender. Your core strength is the trunk that is where all of your power and strength is coming from and your mountain climbers are essential in helping you develop those muscles such that you can have a very strong core. 
get into a flank position with or without support of equipment, making sure to distribute your weight evenly between your hands and your toes. Step 2. Pull your right knee into your chest as far as you can. Step 3. Then switch, pulling that knee out and bringing the other knee in. Make sure your hand should be about shoulder width apart, back plate with head in alignment. Alternate inhaling and exhaling with each leg change. Number 5. These are your squat jumps. Your squat jumps are going to be really good in terms of developing your muscle strength and endurance in your lower body and it's going to help you in terms of driving your legs especially when you hit someone. Stand with feet, shoulder width and knees slightly bent. Bend your knees descend to a full squat position. At the bottom of the squat, powerfully explode straight up bringing your knees towards your chest while in mid-air. At the top of the jump, your thighs should touch your torso. Release your legs. Control your landing by going through your foot and descend into the squat again for another explosive jump. Upon landing, immediately repeat the next jump. Skipping is a full body workout which uses your abdominals to stabilize the body. Legs for jumping, shoulder and arms for turning the rope. Skipping improves coordination, stamina, focus, balance, agility, bone strength, leg strength, cardiovascular fitness, endurance, and flexibility. Steps to do skipping Number 1. Choose the right rope. Number 2. Stand up and pick up the rope. Number 3. Step over the rope. Number 4. Use your hands and wrists to swing the rope over your head. Number 5. When the rope is coming toward the front of your feet, hop over it. Number six, set a pace that works for you. Chair dip is also called tricep dips because they work the tricep muscles on the back of the upper arms. It involves movement of extending the elbow and forearm. Get yourself a chair and get going. Sit on your chair with your arms at your side and your feet flat on the floor. Keep distance apart. Position your hands so that your palms are down beside your hips. Your fingers should grip the front of the chair seat. Move your torso forward of the chair with your arms extended. Plank hold is an asymmetric core strength exercise that involves maintaining a position similar to a push up for the maximum possible time. Start with your elbows on the floor under your shoulder and your forearms flat on the floor. Flip up onto your toes and keep your whole body in one straight line from wrist to head. Look down at your hands and ensure your hips are not too high or low. Hold the plank for 20 seconds to start with build to 60 seconds and remember to work. You are looking for a high intensity workout that helps building speed, power and cardiovascular fitness, stair running is ideal. Running stairs is also a great addition to any agility training program because it builds quickness and foot speed while providing 
and excellent experience to work off. Running stairs targets some of the largest muscles in the body. Stair running accelerates your heart rate rapidly and makes you breathe faster to take in more oxygen. Juggling the soccer ball will improve your single leg strength. As a soccer player, you are constantly on one leg, trying to balance and put your body in good position. Juggling will improve your single leg strength while strengthening your ankles and knees. Now, steps to juggle. Step number one. Balance is something critical in order to be able to juggle a ball. Balance is gained by practicing. The more you practice, the better the balance you will have over the ball. Practice makes perfect. Number two, when the ball touches your foot, that is when you hit the ball upwards. Step three, after practicing a few times, you should be able to gain balance and be able to hit the ball upwards with your foot. Step four, However, you must not kick the ball too high, otherwise you will lose your momentum and your balance. If you feel comfortable with the basic steps, you should try and start juggling with what fit. 